and welcome back to the Challenge War of the Words podcast. I'm your host, Angel Cake, and the Challenge All Stars 3 is the biggest news that has dropped via the Challenge in in quite a while. And we've gotten the cast reveal, we've gotten the trailer, I've gone over the cast background info, I've gone over the shot for shot trailer breakdown, and if you did not see, you can go over to the Reality Realness and the Nullified Take channel, I'll link down below, and you could see Chris, Chantel, and I talk for two and a half hours going over the All-Stars 3 cast and doing our fantasy draft for the upcoming season. And because I'm still very excited about the news of All-Stars 3 and it dropping pretty recently, I decided that I was going to do like a more deep dive into everybody's stats that are on the cast and do my early power rankings. These are the power rankings that I feel from taking the stats of the main season, also taking a part of who's done All-Stars before, as well as how they rank via the other competitors that are on the season and kind of get an idea of where they could land or their power positions heading into the house. This is before the first episode. This is before anything. So these are super, super early power rankings and they are subject to change as we go along through the season. Maybe I'll do these power rankings week to week. Maybe I can get the help of Johnny who does the power rankings segment in my comment section week to week as the main season goes on. And so maybe I could get some help from him as we are going through the season, but we'll just take a look at the super early power rankings for right now. We're gonna go through the women competitors first and at number one, I don't think there's any dispute why I have John A as the number one power ranked player coming into all stars three for the women's side. I mean, she is a powerhouse when it comes to all stars. Her game is aging like fine wine when it comes to season after season of all stars. All star season one, she makes it to the finals, gets third place, doesn't see an elimination. She comes into all stars two with a lot of brand new competitors and also coming in where everybody knows that she made the finals last season and was a powerhouse getting third place, yet in All-Stars 2, she has an even better social game. She is able to make it through the season again without seeing an elimination, making it to the finals and getting that win. She is coming in to All-Stars 3 with the biggest target on her back to date. She is coming in a winner, but she also has a lot of players that she's played with on the previous two seasons. She has shown that she is a strong competitor that if, say, there is going to be some pairing up in the game at some point, whether it's daily challenges, whether it's being paired up to be running the finals, she is shown to be a strong competitor and people may want to run the finals with her. Maybe not the women because she is the biggest competitor for the women, but the men would want to run with her and... We do see in the trailer that she is going to be seeing an elimination at some point this season. When we look at her uh, elimination record, she is two and five. So not the best elimination record, but it depends on the matchup. It depends on the game. So we're going to have to wait and see. But coming into the season, I have John A ranked number one. One. Now, the number two ranked woman competitor coming into this season, I have as Kelly Ann, the person who came third place and tied third place in All Stars 1 with John A. She did take last season off, and Kelly Ann did a great job in All Stars 1. Now, taking a break from All Stars 2 and coming into All Stars 3 with an even more stacked cast, you could be worried about a lot of these competitors, but Kelly Ann is a strong player. She's coming in focused and coming in with a ton of friends. Not only does she have Kendall, but she's gonna be able to work with Wes, work with Nehemiah, work with Melinda. I just think that Kellyanne's gonna be a force to be reckoned with in this season, and she has a good uh, survival percentage of 76%, just slightly lower than John A's 77.55%. So I think that Kellyanne's gonna be a very strong competitor this season. Another strong competitor is gonna be Naya. Now, we've only been able to see two showings of her game in the main season of the challenge. With free agents, she was out pretty early, and then X's 2, she was looking towards the finals. She was right there. She was at the entryway of the finals before being DQ'd from the season. But coming onto this show, she is 
younger than some of the other competitors on the show, which gives her an advantage. She's also physically and athletically strong, and her height is going to be a huge advantage on the season. Granted, we did see in free agents the smaller, more compact Car Maria, who many were thinking that she was going to get eaten up by Naya in the looper elimination, yet she was able to pull out that long, strenuous elimination win against Naya. I just think that Naya's going to come in wanting to make it to the finals, and I think a lot of the competitors are going to want to steer clear of Naya. They're not going to want to take a shot at her via her coming back at them or being scared of facing her in elimination. I just think that Naya is going to come in a strong competitor and I think that her physicality is going to get her far into this season. Number four is going to be another youngin, and that is Kayla. Kayla, whose original season was Invasion of the Champions, season 29. Last time we saw her was Total Madness, losing to Casey. Now, Kayla has been polarizing in her challenge seasons. In Invasion of the Champions, she was very much on the outside of a lot of the uh, cast, her, her underdog cast, where she was getting thrown in quite a bit. But she is a very strong competitor, getting to the finals in Vendettas, getting fourth place overall in that individual finals. She is still a very strong competitor. She's young, she's physical, she's everywhere in that trailer. Maybe the new school players of, say, Kayla, Sylvia, Naya, Jordan would, like, group together to want to work with each other as, like, just hey, let's just do a survival alliance, kind of like how Save the Palace was last season. She can also connect with Wes, Jordan, players that she's seen around and played with them on previous seasons. Despite, like, Total Madness, Wes and Kayla weren't necessarily, like, meshing well with each other, but they, there was that bear situation in the middle of it, and it was just all messy, messy, messy. So I think that I would have Kayla fourth coming into the season as a, as a very strong competitor. And then coming in around the middle now, we're coming into the second tier, middle of the pack, and I have at number five, Ronnie. A real OG. She played on The Challenge Season 2, which was the Real World slash Road Rules Challenge, and she won that season. And then Season 7, Gauntlet, she won that season as well with her Road Rules team. She's coming in, Not been on the challenge since season seven. But when you look at the trailer, she's everywhere on that trailer. I just keep on picturing Ronnie up in the front, leaving everybody in the dust in that mud daily challenge, running to get the ball, and then turning around and then giving Naya the stiff arm. Oh, gives me chills. She's also shown in a few other daily challenges. She is in impeccable shape. I don't think she's aged since the last time we saw her on the challenge, which was Gauntlet. She looks incredible. She looks like she's a fierce competitor. I also think that there is a voiceover from Ronnie in the trailer saying you don't come onto the challenge if you're not coming on to win. And all she does is win on the challenge. Her two times she has won. Can she make it to the finals? I wholeheartedly believe she can. I think that she is a sleeper on the season. The only thing I'm worried about is that the competitors that have not been on the challenge in a long time, may not have the strongest bonds. She could have a strong bond with, say, Mark, as they were on the same challenge season two together. But will she have enough protection to not be thrown into one elimination, two eliminations, or three eliminations? She reminds me of, like, Kendall from season one of All Stars, where she is maybe a smaller competitor, and the women would want to take shots at her. In an elimination, she also hasn't seen any eliminations. So there is that mystery about her where competitors might look at her and be like, I want to take her on in the elimination, see what she's made of, and see if I could possibly win against her instead of going up against a competitor that has a 5-3 and three elimination record or a 4-2 and two an elimination record. I'd rather take my chances going on the mystery that I may not know what she is capable of or what her mental state will be once in the elimination and the pressures of the elimination. So I think that that could be a possibility as we've seen that happen quite a bit with Ayana last season, Sophia uh, last season as well, Kendall the season prior being thrown over and over 
over again in the elimination. So I could see Ronnie being sent into multiple eliminations, but I can also see Ronnie winning multiple eliminations. So I have Ronnie at number five and at number six coming directly in the middle of the pack. And this is going to be, I'll just, I'll just say the name, Sylvia. I have Sylvia coming in directly in the middle of the pack. We have seen her recently on the challenge in season 32. Final Reckoning was the last time we saw her and she made it to the finals. Yes, she was paired up with a very strong competitor in Joss. Yes, she had a ton of friends in her Lavender Ladies on that season to help get her to that point. But Sylvia has a 5-1 elimination record. She was medically DQ'd from Vendetta's. So she was on a really strong path of making it deep within that season. Also, she is everywhere on that trailer. That's a big thing, is that she is everywhere on that trailer. That doesn't necessarily mean she's making it to the finals. That doesn't necessarily mean she's winning the season, as we saw with uh, Nehemiah in last season's trailer. But I just think that if they're putting her out in front in multiple daily challenges, having those sound bites of like, I want her head on a platter. I think she's going to be a force to be reckoned with on this season, on this upcoming season. So I think that shows that she could make it past maybe the halfway point of the season. So I have Sylvia ranking in the middle. And because she is featured so heavily in the trailer, I, that's why I have her jumping up over half the cast. Now let's get into still in the second tier, but now in the back half of the cast. And at number seven, I have Melinda. Melinda was the breakout star last season, in my opinion. Melinda coming in 0-4 in eliminations. Nobody knows exactly what she was going to bring to the season, bring to the cast. And she did a fantastic job, not only winning an elimination, but winning two eliminations, getting to the finals, a lot of people were saying that Melinda and Nehemiah were robbed in those finals. So I think Melinda's coming in no longer at the bottom of the tiers, but now in the mid tiers, she's coming in with a lot of friends. The only thing I worry about is if it's a solo game and Melinda gets thrown into elimination, what will happen? Because the only solo elimination we saw last season with Melinda, she was going up against Tina and Tina kind of was just letting Melinda do her thing. Tina didn't want to be there anymore, and so she kind of just put out her arms and goes, eh, I want Melinda ha to have this win. Now, the second elimination, she was up against Latirian and Jasmine, and she had her partner of Nehemiah there to help her out. I loved Melinda last season. I'm still rooting for Melinda. I want to see her do really well this season, and I think jumping up to number seven in a very strong cast list like this is big, but I still have a lot of question marks and I think there is a risk to her game if say somebody calls her out to go into elimination or her numbers can't save her from going into an elimination. And I just feel like there is a point where she will be going into an elimination at some point over the season, but I'm still gonna be rooting for her as well as the next person that I have. And I think this will shock everybody that I have this person so low on my initial power rankings and that is Kendall. Kendall was only on Inferno before coming on to doing All-Stars 1 and All-Stars 2. All-Stars 1, she was a force to be reckoned with. Everybody, I think, was like doing a lot of question marks. What can Kendall do? Will she be able to pull out some elimination wins? And she didn't just pull out one elimination win. She pulls out multiple elimination wins and sets herself up to coming into All-Stars 2 with a lot more friends, a lot more cred in say the all-star realm to where I think we saw Latarian wanting to jump on Kendall's team because he really loved the way she played the game. And I don't think she was going to be sent into an elimination at all that season. I think she would have had a lot of protection via Darrell's alliance. I think that she would have possibly made it to the finals if it wasn't for the either somebody giving her COVID via the production team kind of messing up or as she was saying in the edit, her back was hurting her. She has not been able to make the finals. And so 0 for 2 on making it to the finals despite having such a strong record. But that's how worried I am coming into this season. I don't think she has many enemies. I think if anything, she has a lot of friends. 
but she is still on the shorter side. I can still see people wanting to take shots at her, and that's where I worry. I want to see Kendall make it to the finals. I just worry about the way that she's played the last two seasons and is unable to make it to the finals. And Tina, I have at number nine. Um, I think that's a shocker to a lot of people because of the way she went out in All-Stars 2. I'm shocked to even see Tina on All-Stars 3 because of that, but she's back. She is great TV. She's going to have a great amount of confessionals. I have her on here at number nine ahead of, say, the last three competitors because Tina, I think, is a strong competitor. We do see her possibly winning an elimination. She does say in the trailer that she wants to right the wrongs that was happening last season. And I think she's talking about the way she went out. So I do think she's going to go into another elimination. I do think she wins. And I also see her giving Kelly Han a headlock in one of the daily challenges. So I think that Tina's going to come back fiery. She's going to want to make it farther. And so I have her at number nine because I still worry about if she does get sent down to elimination, and yes, she does win, but if you get sent down once, you can be sent down a couple more times. So I'm gonna put Tina at number nine, especially after the showing she showed in All-Stars 2 where she can be reactionary, and maybe, yes, she does win in elimination. She's like, I proved myself, now I don't care, and she kinda like takes a knee and doesn't wanna do another elimination. <laughs> and coming in at number 10, I have Jemmy. Jemmy is a social player. Maybe I should have put her a little bit more up at the top, but I just don't think that there is any place to hide. I think in All-Stars 1, it was the perfect storm for Jemmy and say John A. I think they're the younger players. They came onto the season wanting to use a more of a social game. Maybe they hadn't played a lot with the competitors that were on All-Stars 1, so they wanted to stay under the radar. Jemmy had a great social game and political game, trying to be like setting up a challenge family with her mom being Beth, her dad being Mark Long. But coming onto this season and how stacked this cast is, there's just no place for Jemmy to hide. And yes, she was able to get around going into an elimination in All-Stars 1. I just don't see that happening in All-Stars 3. She's going to have to have an impeccable social game. And I just don't think she's going to be able to hide anywhere. She will have a lot of friends. But when it comes down to if somebody's going to be able to call somebody out to go into elimination, I think Jemmy will have her name called. And that's why I have her so low on the list because of her elimination record of 2 and 4. At number 11... It hurts me to say this. I have Veronica, a true OG, three-time winner. Being a three-time winner on a season like this is going to be a huge target on your back. And Veronica did not have a great showing on 32. She didn't have a great showing on 31 or 30. So I hope Queen V can make it far into the game. I just... Don't know if it can happen. She's going to have some friends with, yes, Jemmy and Tina. But will her connections be able to protect her and get her far? I just don't know. And her 2-2 two and two, uh, elimination record is not good. If Kendall would be thrown into eliminations because of her size and people want to take a shot at her, I can see Veronica doing the same thing. I can see people doing the same thing with Veronica. She is also one of the shorter competitors on the season. And so if it comes down to brass tacks, somebody's going to call her out. And the fact that she is a three-time champion, I think is worrisome. But she's all over that trailer, and I think she can go very far into the game. And finally, I hate to say it, but Cynthia is going to be number 12 in my power rankings. I don't know how well connected she is with a lot of the competitors. I don't think she has any enemies, but I don't think she has any really strong allies and bonds. And I just feel like, again, with what I was saying with Ronnie, if you're a competitor that hasn't been on the challenge in quite a while, you're kind of like the ipso facto person that's going to be sent into the eliminations more often than not. Can Cynthia win against a lot of these competitors. I do think she, that she can win an elimination, but can she win multiple eliminations? 
I don't know. I want to see Cynthia go far. I love everybody on this cast. It's just going to be really, really tough for Cynthia. She's going to have to go the Ayana route, I feel. And she's going to have to be going down there over and over and over again. And it's just the factor of can she make those strong ties and strong bonds quickly in the game to help save her from going into like three eliminations. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for Cynthia. And I think she can inch up her way as the game goes on in these power rankings. But initially coming into this season, she's a big wild card. She's a big mystery. And I think she's going to be someone that's going to be sent into more eliminations than not. And it scares me. It scares me for Cynthia, but I'm rooting for her wholeheartedly going into All-Stars 3. All right, now it's time to get to the men's side. And I read a lot of the comments from my cast reveal and background info, and everybody was talking about how stacked the men's side of this season is. I think the cast is stacked overall. I think this is one of the toughest cast in challenge history to date. This is going to be a tough, tough battle to not only make it to, say, the finals and to win, just getting from episode to episode. Everybody has the biggest targets on their backs for either being a finalist or winning. I mean, there are a ton of winners on this cast list and pretty much everybody is a finalist on this cast. It's going to be a tough, tough battle. But let's get into the men's side of the power rankings. And number one, I think it's no surprise here to anybody who is watching this. I have Wes at the number one slot in these power rankings. He's coming in. Yes, his survival rate isn't the highest out of everybody that's on this cast, but he has done a lot on the challenge seasons. He has an incredible elimination record. He is... Someone who has competed on the more recent seasons of the challenge, and he is coming in in great shape. He is all over the trailer. He is going to play a messy game, and he has so many friends and allies on this season. He has a lot of enemies as well, but I think having more friends than enemies, I think he's going to counterbalance, and we've seen him be able to round up the numbers to be on his side in these types of games. Yes, there are a lot of players that have played with him, knows exactly how big of a threat he is. I just think that it's going to be tough to take him on and take him out. So coming into the season, I have the biggest expectations on Wes, and I have him at the number one slot. At the number two slot, we have the godfather himself, Mark Long, in the power rankings. Something that surprised me is that he has a 98.41 survival rating on the challenge main season. He's only seen two eliminations in his challenge career. And that is including All-Stars 1. And let's just be real. He talked about kind of giving the win in X's in that final elimination right before the finals to Johnny. And he said he'd never do that again. I think he could have definitely won X battle, made it all the way to the finals. He could have been to... Every final that he's ever been in in a challenge career if he did not take the uh, take the L against Bananas. But he is coming in with a lot of friends. He is a person that is well built. I think he's going to learn from his mistakes in All-Stars 1. And he is just somebody that everybody wants to be around. Nobody wants to take shots at him. Nobody wants to see him leave the game. When I think of like enemies for all these competitors I can name like one or two offhand but with Mark I can't name a single person he is a strong person if he is going into an elimination he's going to try to rip somebody's head off so that's what I have I think he has one of the best social games I think he is physically dominant I just think he's going to be a strong strong player coming into the game and that's why I have him as the power rankings number two at number three you can't deny it's Durrell a uh, four-time champion. He has a 75% survival rating. He has made it to both finals in All-Stars, and he's basically gotten second place in both of those. Is he coming in with a bigger target on his back? 100%. But does he have a ton of friends? 100%. I think with Wes on the season, it's going to be tough for Darrell. And the same thing with Wes. Darrell's going to want to take out Wes. We're going to have to wait and see. This is going to be a... Tough battle. I just think you can't deny Darrell. Even him seeing an elimination for the first time last season, he was able to pull out that win and make it to the finals. You can never count out Darrell. I just think that 
he is going to have a tougher time this season than, say, the previous seasons. And he has a 7-3 and three, uh, elimination record, which is very, very strong and very, very incredible. At number four, we have Jordan coming in, another challenge champion. Uh, last time we saw him was Total Madness, losing to Fessy. Uh, he has an 82.84% survival rating. Um, again, kind of like Darrell, he's coming in. Wes and his numbers would be staring at Jordan, wanting to take him out. The last time we saw them on the challenge, it wasn't like the best of buddies, the best of terms, but I could just see uh, Jordan is going to be a tough competitor taking out in eliminations, depending on the elimination. He is going to be somebody who is abrasive. He is somebody who makes it deep into every single season that he does, and he if he makes it to the finals... He's going to be a tough person to stop in the finals. So to me, Jordan is going to be coming in with a big target on his back. But can you take him out is the is the question. Who, when, and how can somebody take him out? He's going to be tough. So that's why I have him at number four. And now let's get into the number five, and that is Nehemiah. Nehemiah came in last season, firecracker. He was hitting home run after home run. We saw intensity we saw passion we saw strategy and purpose making an alliance to combat some heavy hitters in last season in Darrell Brad Derek and he made it known where he was standing on the season in the cast and he made it to the finals I think we're gonna see not only the same Nehemiah from last season who wants to make it even further into the game, but he is coming in with even more friends, his best friend, Wes. And now I think Nehemiah is going to be feeling himself. He's going to want to take charge. And I think he's going to come in just with all that momentum from last season, all that, like just thinking about like walking away in the dark on that tarmac and being like, I want to win. I want that win. The thing is, is that Nehemiah will see an elimination. There's no doubt. We see it in the trailer that he is in an elimination, but every single season, Nehemiah finds himself in the elimination. Just, there's just no way of him being able to get around eliminations. He always goes into eliminations. I have more faith in him to make it past those eliminations, but it just seems like he always makes it into at least one elimination or two, which is nerve-wracking and it is risky and that's why I have him at number five you can't deny that Nehemiah is going to be a force to be reckoned with coming onto this season and another force coming onto this season I think is Brad coming in right in the middle in that second tier but right in the middle of the whole men's cast I have Brad Brad is big Brad is beefy but Brad isn't the most strategically adept challenge competitor on this season. Yes, he will come in with friends, with Derek, with Darrell, but last season, I think Brad was helped out a lot by one, Derek being eliminated early on the season, and then when they were pairing up for the pairings, he got Jody, who was a machine on last season. So if this is a solo game, I'm kind of wondering, okay, well, Brad's going to have to do a lot this season. He's going to have to be putting more of his mind onto the challenge, more onto the games, not get DQ'd. If this is a solo season, he's going to have to do a lot for himself. Luckily, he has a very high uh, survival rating on both the main seasons and All-Stars. I think he is going to be able to make it deep into this game. He's shown a lot in the trailers. Um, but I think last season he was helped out by his partner Jody a ton and also the circumstances of Derek leaving early. Speaking of Derek, I have him at number seven. I think Derek is going to have a comeback this season. He is shown in quite a bit of the trailers. I think that he is going to right the wrongs of last season. I think he's going to put away the uh, sequence patterns and uh, not look like an Arizona tea can this season. I think he's going to now be more focused on trying to get further into the game and push forward. If he's going into the eliminations, I think that he can make it out more so than the people that I have back behind him. I just think he's a very strong competitor. I do think that he took a long time in the offseason after he was eliminated early last season to really think about his game last season and trying to further and progress and evolve from that to get further this season. I think Derek could have a comeback this season. 
and make it at least farther than he did last season, which was, I think, episode three, episode four. Coming in at number eight, I have Yes. Yes, I think, is a strong competitor. We did not see him a ton in the trailer, but we know the kind of social game he can play. He is very quiet, under the radar. I don't think there is much place for him to hide this season, especially after winning and being the sole winner of All-Star Season 1. I think he is going to have a big target on his back. And I think that he's finally going to be seeing his first elimination in his challenge career on this season. But I do think that he can, depending on what the elimination game is and who he's going up against, I think Yes can win an elimination. And he's coming in with friends, say uh, Veronica, Tina. I think he's going to be able to use his connections from All-Stars 1 and with his bonds from his past that I think he can make it far into this game. There is that worry that Darrell knows awful and well that Yes is a strong bear and he's going to want to take a shot at him before the finals. And if you think Darrell knows that firsthand, you can dang well believe that Wes watched All-Star Season 1 going like, okay, that dude is going to be tough to beat in a foot race. We're going to have to take a shot at Yes. Uh, probably Jordan has already... I'd, yes, Nehemiah knows just how good of a player Yes is. So, Yes is going to have a big target on his back after winning All-Star Season 1. And he's not going to be able to play the same game that he played in All-Star Season 1. So, it's going to be interesting to see what Yes can do on this season. How has he changed his game? Did he change his game? And what will happen on the season when he goes into an elimination? I just feel like it's guaranteed he's going to be going into an elimination and what can he do when he gets into the elimination we're going to have to wait to see what's going to happen there coming in at number nine i have last season's winner mj um mj is coming in as last season's winner did not see an elimination 100 percent going to see at least one elimination this season it's just guaranteed guaranteed he's going to go into at least one elimination Who he goes up against, who he's facing, and what the elimination game is, is going to be key. I worry more for MJ than I do than for John A. I think John A has a strong social game and and so much stronger bonds than MJ does that John A will be able to navigate muddy waters way better than MJ. MJ just, I don't think, will be able to get it done socially. He kind of was brought into their alliance of Darrell because of the room that he picked. So it was right place at right time. But then when they got paired up with each other, he got with John A, who had a lot of strong ties. If this is going to be a social game, it's going to be muddy waters for MJ. And I think he could see not one, but two multiple eliminations. And I think that he does have a good elimination record, maybe... Uh, he, his elimination record is two and two, so it's not, it's nothing special. But now, let's get into number 10, and at number 10, I have Letarian. Letarian we saw last season get into an alliance, play a little bit of a more strategical game. In the first season, he was very much a lone wolf. He wanted to prove himself. He wanted to go into elimination and keep on going into the elimination because he wanted to keep on proving himself. And he showed to be a fierce competitor in the pole wrestle, but all the eliminations that haven't been pole wrestles, Letarian has lost. Getting a third pole wrestle in your third season is going to be very difficult to get. It's going to be rare for him to see another pole wrestle, I think. I think that Letarian, I'm worried about strategically and socially, Because last season, he was kind of brought into the Save the Palace Alliance. One, kind of like MJ, he he was in the right place at the right time, getting the room with Tech, Melinda, and Nehemiah. But now that Nehemiah, Melinda are now having Wes and Kellyanne a little bit more of the numbers, I can see Letarian kind of being on the outside ring of their alliance, especially with no Tech on this season. So the Save the Palace Alliance isn't necessarily in full force. So I worry for Letarian. He is also the type of player that will take on anybody anywhere, and he will step up to send himself into elimination, which is not the name of the game. So I worry for Letarian. 
I worry for him strategically, socially, and going into an elimination. I just feel like he needs to bank or has to hope that it's going to be yet another pole wrestle, and that is going to be slim chances to none. Coming in at number 11 for the men, I have Cyrus. We saw him on All-Stars 1. He was able to make it over halfway. He was sent into the elimination. He was going in with Beth. He faced off against Alton and Anissa. Alton was going to be a tough competitor regardless. We saw Cyrus having a back injury. That's, I think the worrisome for me. I think Cyrus does have some ties within this game with Mark, with the OGs, but the worrisome is injury prone. Um, Cyrus is one of the older competitors on the season, and I think he is coming in better in shape than he did in the previous seasons that he did, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to keep him out of elimination and also being able to win against majority of this cast. And I worry about the the bonds. I, I feel if Beth was on this season, I'd feel better about Cyrus on this season because he would have that ride or die. I don't think he has that ride or die necessarily on this season. And I worry for Cyrus and how far he can go in this game. And finally, coming in at number 12, I have a two-time champ in last place, and that is Tyler Duckworth, who doesn't have a great survival rating. He has a 47.34% on the main season, 59.82% from last season. Uh, he, like I said, best placement was first, Cutthroat and Rivals, worst placement. He was out in episode two of uh, Gauntlet 3, elimination record 4 and 3. Not a bad elimination record, winning against CT twice, or CT and Bananas, um, but 0-1 in All-Stars series. Last season, he did have Janelle. Last time, he was putting on a ton for the social game. He did say that a lot of the women loved him last season, but that didn't stop him from going into the elimination against Latirian in a pole wrestle and losing and being tossed around like a ragdoll. I can't necessarily tell exactly the strong connections that Tyler has on this cast list. This is going to be a tough, tough battle this season for anybody to make it far into the game. Everybody has something that they can be targeted for in this coming season. These are all players that love this game, are playing this game to win, and know how to play the game in their respective manners. And it's going to be a, I think a more cutthroat game than we've seen even the last two seasons together. I think we're in for a huge season, a, a season that's going to be shaking everybody up. Things that we've never seen before are going to happen on this season, I feel, and it's going to be a tough, tough season for anybody. If I think that a two-time challenge champion in Tyler is the number 12th for the men, and then saying Veronica, a three-time challenge champ, is the 11th for the women in the early power rankings, the initial power rankings coming on to All-Stars Season 3. That just shows how crazy of a season we could be in for come May 11th. But those are my power rankings for the challenge All-Stars 3. That's my super early power rankings for this season. Let me know if you agree with some of my power rankings or if you disagree and what changes would you make to my power rankings. Let me know down in the comment section below. I want to hear anything and everything you have to say about my power rankings, about the cast, about All-Stars 3. Are you excited? Are you not excited? Are you cautiously optimistic? Who are you looking forward to seeing the most play the game? Who are you happy to see back? Who are you not happy to see back? Who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting against? Let me know anything and everything. I'm so excited. I'm just super excited and very enthusiastic about this season coming up. I'm so excited to have a challenge season to get to talk about it week to week with you in the uh, comment sections and also with Chris and Chantel on their channels week to week. I'm so, so excited. I cannot wait for this season to start. Thank you again so much for watching and listening to this podcast. I really, really appreciate it. 
And while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge content, more challenge all-star content. Also, I want to give a special shout out. Thank you to everyone who supports me over at patreon.com slash angelcakevids. Thank you so much for supporting me with your generosity, with your uh, 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 and appreciation and support. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And again, thank you everyone for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Peace. Hey. Hey.